What's up y'all, Jesse Warden here. Today we're gonna to talk about the observer pattern. Today I'm going to blow your mind. Once you learn about the observer pattern, your perception of the programming world and software in general is going to drastically be changed forever. There is no going back. You're gonna look at everything in a completely different way, for good or bad. What is a design pattern? A design pattern is merely just a nomenclature or word that I can say that means a ton of things, but it's boiled down into one word, right? When I say that word and I describe on how something's built to you, you immediately understand what I'm talking about. So for example, when I say this program is written in JavaScript, you immediately know, oh, JavaScript. It's JavaScript, it's probably running in a web browser. He's probably, you know, it's an interpreted language, dynamic, has no strong typing. He's using a certain set of tool sets, probably have some kind of libraries or libraries like all this stuff, right? you know merely by saying the word JavaScript. Now, obviously there's a lot of flexibility around JavaScript and you know that as well. So that one word has a lot of connotations. So rather than saying all those things, I say it's built in JavaScript. And from there, your mind can go wild. Design patterns are a little different. They're more from an engineering perspective on saying, look, these are common ways of solving common engineering problems. And we utilize these words or patterns, a way of solving things. So for example, if you know anything about mechanical engineering, there's this uh, heavy load and I need to lift it up. What do I do? Well, the most common ways of doing it are, are a lever or a pulley system. A pulley system has mathematical constraints on how each pulley added to the system significantly reduces the weight. Observer patterns are the same way. If you have a problem in programming, you can implement this design pattern that helps solve a common problem. These things are old, they've been around for a long time, and the only one that's really controversial is Singleton. You can trust that these are well-known patterns that have nothing to do with JavaScript. They're used everywhere. When you're building something in programming, you need to know about things changing. You need to know that if it changes, I need to visually represent that somehow. So there's this relationship between pieces of data changes and then it updates. For example, you add persons to a list, the list grows. One gladi gladiator attacks another's hit points are reduced. The life bar goes down, right, from a game perspective. Whatever that is, those all revolve around the observer pattern. That really means a class that looks at some data and whenever it changes, it tells the world about it, those who care, whether they subscribe or whatever messaging system you're utilizing. Now we can implement this later into our existing gladiators, but let's show you the concept. So we're gonna create a new file new class, save as hit points. Okay, this is our observer class. Sing it with me, kids. Copy pasta coding. Hit points doesn't have currently any dependencies, so we'll just delete those. Doesn't actually need to extend anything in an object. All right. All right, so we have our basic hit points class. The first thing to do is to determine what hit points are. Really, hit points are a representation of how many hit points you have currently, right? Are you damaged or not? Versus what the max total that you currently have at most. So if you're at 10 hit points and your max 10 points is 10, you're at full health. If your hit points are five and your max hit points are 10, you're at half health. So we need those two values to really determine where we're at, okay? So when hit points change, we need to know what the context of that change is, what it was before, whatever else. We don't really care. What we do care is where are we at now in relation to where we should be. So we're saying value and max value as the parameters. Set them. Okay, observer pattern is about controlling inputs to let people know it changed. We have to look at the data and change it our way. And then when we know it's changed, we can do a change event. The easiest way to control inputs is through functions. In this case, methods. So we're gonna say a class method of apply damage, right? Just as before, very similar function. But in this case, how much damage? So we're gonna say this.value mi minus whatever you pass us. And to make sure we're not negative, because we're not going to do the D&D rules of negative hit points, okay, it doesn't make any sense. We're going to say if this, that value suddenly goes below zero, set it back to zero. We want to make sure we're always at least zero, okay? Zero means dead or unconscious, however your rules come about. Lastly, we need to let the world know. So this dot unchanged, right? We need to fire some form of unchanged. There are two things we need to do to support that. First, people need to register that they'd like to know about a change. Define people. Well, callbacks for now are a one-to-many thing, right? So one one person can listen, actually it's a one-to-one -one thing. So one person can register to listen to this particular person, okay? 
similar to like like imagine if phones didn't have uh, conferencing, so you can only have a one-to-one -one call. That's most how most phone calls work. So we're gonna say set callback. The first parameter is scope, or where's that callback defined? And the second is the change callback function. In this case, it's the callback function. Okay. So we're gonna say the scope is the scope that you passed in, and the callback function is the callback function you sit in. Got it. Number two. When we implement this on change right here, we need to call that callback function if it exists. So if somebody did in fact, because we could have hit points changing and no one's listening and we should be able to support that, right? So if scope does not equal to null, somebody's actually interested in hearing about what's going on here. So let's help them out. We'll take the callback function, call it in this particular scope. All of that funky call weird way of executing a function means is that this will work, right? That's all that means. So you don't need to worry about call and function that apply and all that other stuff. That's just all that means, okay? Cool, so we have hit points that now can hear about the world. So let's uh, let's test them out. We're gonna load our hit points file. It's gonna come in as a hit points class. We're gonna say hit points. 10, 10. 10 and 100 are a great number because they work really well with percentages, make the math very simple. So let's test our class, make sure it works, make sure we didn't misspell anything. We didn't, it's a miracle. Or is it funky post video editing magic and it work? Number two, let's test out to see what our value is. So our actual value is 10, cool. We know we have a way to get the value, but we would never ever go hit points dot value equals, right? That's not how you do it. You have setter methods and getter methods, whether they're real getter setters, whether they're you know, accessors, right? Class accessors, or they're actual functions. For now, we're gonna go with convention that if you're utilizing the hit points class or any observer class, we will provide you a method or set of methods to set the data internally, right? We need to know, we need to control input so we know what's going on. If we know what's going on, we can accurately tell the world when things change, okay? Cool, so we have that. Now let's register our first callback. So say on, hit points change, man. Dude, hit points are now, hit points, dot value. Cool, so we have our change function. Let's register it. Hit points, set callback. In this case, it's global function. You can set it to a class this later. Learn how to spell, Mr. Warden. Copy pasta coding fixes all errors. Try it again. Apply damage to. Dude, hit points are now eight. Fantastic. Run it again. Our callback function is working. How do we stop that from happening? We can stop listening via set callback. Null, null, right? Now we call about it then, it'll change internally, but no one needs to know about it. We are done listening. And we can still verify the value is now four just by checking the value, cool? So that is the basics of the callback function. That is an example of the observer pattern where you have a single input, right? In this case, apply damage. And we can register and unregister for a callback to be aware of when data internally changes.